Completing a Stuart triple expansion engine, this one is part 22. Refitting the connecting rods and support columns, reprofiling the cylinder mounting lugs and looking at some potential problems. I think it's wise to fit lock nuts to the bolts on the big ends of the connecting rods. If one of these was to come loose when the engine was running, particularly at a high speed, then potentially parts of the engine could be very badly damaged. Fitting lock nuts is a very simple job. Hold one of the nuts in place with a spanner and tighten the other nut against it with another spanner. Even though the felt tip marker pen numbers soon wore off, they were there just long enough to make sure that I put the parts in the correct order. Here's the third and final big end part being fitted together. This is quite a fiddly job, the nuts and bolts are quite small. They're only 7BA, but they're strong enough to do the job. In this clip I'm fitting one side of the support columns. The support columns at this side go through the gunmetal fitting, which in turn supports the three crosshead guides. The threads on the end of the columns are 4BA, and here I'm fitting four 4BA nuts to hold the first set of columns in place. First of all, for convenience, I tighten the nuts using a 4BA nut spinner, then I just nip them up gently with an ordinary spanner. I'm being firm but gentle, they need to be tight, but not so tight that they shear off the 4BA studs. That's one side done, now for the other side. As I fit the other side, you will notice that two of the support columns have a shorter thread, the ones at the right hand side. If there's any thread protruding from these nuts, the sole plate can't be properly mounted to the mounting base. Using exactly the same principle of a nut spinner first, followed by a spanner, now all of the columns are actually mounted, but there's a problem. Thankfully, it's a minor problem. One of the support columns on this side is different to the rest. It has a bit in the middle with a hole through it. This is for mounting the reversing shaft, and I just got them the wrong way around. I checked with the drawing and made a mental note to put it right as soon as possible. The mounting on this engine is a little bit strange, and this is a real problem. There are three mounting bolts down the other side, but at this side only one. And if I tighten a bolt into this hole, I could actually crack the sole plate, so I'm not going to do that for the moment. What I'm going to do though, is reprofile the mounting lugs on the cylinder block. I've already done this on the high pressure cylinder, now I need to do it on the low and intermediate pressure cylinders. As you can see, the lugs have been squared off. I think this was done to accommodate the fittings that support the reversing gear shaft. When this side of the cylinder block is mounted to the columns, it's not very noticeable. As nothing fouls the reversing shaft fittings, I may as well round these off and make them look better. In my opinion, the best tool for doing this job is my Proxon rechargeable mini drill fitted with a small drum sander. This makes rounding the edges a very simple job. You have to be careful and control the drum sander. Here I'm showing how I use my thumb against the drill itself to stabilize the drum sander so it doesn't jump around and mark any other parts of the engine. There are two gunmetal levers mounted to the crossheads on the intermediate and low pressure cylinders. And according to the drawing, both of these levers need a hole drilling in the middle of them, and that needs to be threaded 5BA. One of these arms operates the air pump, and the other one operates the water pump. But to my eye, the air pump one is out of line. When I place a steel rule against it, it doesn't look too bad, but I think it's out of line. I'll find out when I come to fit the pumps, but I haven't made those yet. I don't know why I'm doing this, I'm very slowly turning the crankshaft using my electric drill. The crankshaft is technically very good indeed, and the fit of the split bearings to the crankshaft is very near perfection. The tapping you can hear is the end of the connecting rods is caused by them hitting the crosshead support bar. Over now to the milling machine, I'm milling a piece of steel to exactly the right thickness to make a pad to fit onto the casting where the single bolt goes through into the base. I previously made one for the centre bolt on the other side. This metal pad that I'm making, which will eventually have a hole in the middle of it, needs to be exactly the same thickness as the casting pump mounting is from the bottom of the base. I mark the part with the marker pen, cut it on the bandsaw, drill a hole in the middle of it, and now it's time to mount it to the underside of the sole plate in precisely the right position. For this I'm using some super glue. 
This is medium viscosity cyanoacryl adhesive. After applying the adhesive, I stick the metal plate in place, and to make sure it's in the exact right place, I put a bolt through it. Once the cyanoacryl adhesive or super glue had cured, I just removed the bolt. But I can't leave it looking like this, so I'm going to trim it and paint it. And for this, I'm using an 80 grit flapper wheel in my bench mounted Proxon drill. You can really control the cut with this machine once it's held in position on the bench. I'm only removing metal from the steel plate, not from the casting. As you can see in this clip, the steel part that I made matches the casting. The next job is to do a bit of painting. Once this paint is dry, the steel plate that I fitted will look like it's part of the casting. And just in case you've forgotten, this paint is Phoenix Precision Paints Great Western Railway Green. I also painted the nuts and the threads at the bottom end of the columns. If I don't do this, when I steam the engine, the threads will go very rusty over time and that will cause problems. I haven't painted the two middle ones because I still need to switch these around, but once I've done that, I will paint them green too. And that concludes this episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.